Hello everyone, this is the Boogeyman, um, and this is going to be the first in a series of videos I'm hoping to make that'll kind of help the new players out. What I want to talk about today is openings in the faction I'm going through right now is Germany. And I want you just to kind of watch how I do it. Normally you can go for a regular infantry squad. But if you're Germany, because the machine gunner costs a little more, it actually takes a little longer for them to pop up. So if you don't go, uh, if you don't get up there right away, you're going to be behind the eight ball as far as already you know, had time to cap that middle point especially. Um, if you do not want to go with the regular squad, you want to do something maybe a little more advanced, but also a little um, a little better as far as getting units out there quick. And what I like to do quite a bit, and also cover for that light vehicle spam you sometimes see with the Americans or Russians. I, I like to go with just the machine gunner and run him up to the point he needs to be at. Meanwhile, I'm going to buy a few riflemen, one to cap my back point usually, um, and one to kind of set up sandbags for my machine gunner while he sits in position. I also get an AT infantry squad. Now the reason I do that is twofold. One, I like that AT rifle. Um, and the second part is the other guy in that squad is just an SMG Hashtag. guy with a few extra rounds if he needs to get cover for the AT. So you can use him right away to, for instance, blow a hole in this wall when you get up here to get some cover, or to get behind this point and start capping for yourself. Meanwhile, while these guys are running up, you yeah, don't boy. have to be micromanaging them after you give them an order. So you want to get good at setting down guys, getting them yeah, to boy. work and uh, get your squad out there quick. Another tip is don't ever have your machine gunner set up sandbags right away. Um, take use of available cover and have your riflemen that aren't as expensive or as useful to um, early game hold off to uh, set up sandbags for yourself and even even go in between the inventories and give them to each other. Okay, so if you look here, I've got a machine gun set up here. First my riflemen here. I'm setting him up to cover in case they start driving the vehicle up mid like this. Uh, meanwhile, I have a rifleman coming here, rifleman coming here, and one of the riflemen capping my back point. While I've got all this going on, um, the next thing I'm going to want to look into buying is depending on what they bring. Now there's two ways to play this game early game. You can play reactive where you set up things and have them run into your fields of fire and kill them. Or you can play um, a more active role all the way around by pushing forward with your troops once you have a machine gun to kind of cover advance. So if you're playing passive, it's going to depend on what you want to buy. Now, let's say you're Germany and a lot of times in Germany you'll get behind the eight ball in that middle point. One really good tip is to watch if you bought this smaller squad, you're going to be able to get a 2-2-2 up a little faster. So if you're going active, a 2-2-2 is a really great early game uh, light vehicle to run with. You can punch off the roofs of buildings, you can punch off the sandbags, anything you see around here you don't like. Um, and let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. The reason I'm not going Luchis, um, which is about the same, actually exact same price as a 2 2 is it's a little slower. And for what you're buying a light tank for, you don't really want anything slow. Granted, it has a little more armor and can take AT rifle rounds a little better than a can, or a little better than a 222 can. It's not going to have that mobility that 222 can really put in high Double clicking, of course, makes your unit go fast. But I want to show you how to use the 222 to kind of clear out some cover your enemy might need. You want to make sure you're watching for AT rifles with the arsenal saw. Breaking down buildings and half and uh, Sandbags is really useful. Now look what I'm doing here. I'm shooting the roof. Now if you shoot the wall, same building, I'm not going to have as good a luck if you start blowing it down. It takes a few more shots. So by aiming at the roof, you actually get that building to collapse a lot sooner. The other thing you notice I'm doing, even though there's no enemies in this map, is I'm moving my two people constantly. You're just making it harder for them to hit, and it's easier for you to get out of there by keeping it more in. And you're also kind of scouting with them and seeing what tries to take a shot at Okay, now I've got my 222 up and they've called out something that's destroyed. Let's it. So I'm going to destroy my 222. Destroy your vehicle by double yeah, double clicking. So let's say the 222 got out here and they shot and they took off my tire. That's probably the safer move if I can't use it as a turn is to blow it up and let it stop my enemy from having anything there. It's a little far forward for them to get to, but I just want you to get the concept. Now the other thing you want to watch early game, especially Germans, you want to watch that sniper respond. That sniper spawns after two minutes and you really want to get him up there fast. I actually like to keep my sniper a little back from the main line and get him to pop this right away. This is the only um, really special thing that a sniper can do outside of its special ability, and that is its flare gun to drop off, or its flare grenade to drop off supplies, specifically MG ammo. That's really the only ammo I found really necessary to have a sniper drop off. I'm also going to bring up an AT gun and show you a trick with AT guns. It's a light game trick that really saves you some time and energy. First off, let's get our stuff. Verstanden! Smoke. Yeah. Using control to click him right away, and then I can get off as soon as I need to move on to micro something else. Um, the other thing you want to be doing in this game, even when you're on the deep, if you're not currently engaged in something, 
you want to move your guys up. So I want a new guy, and I'm moving him up just to get some more line of sight. And he's probably the most important aspect of this game. Similarly, if you use tank, you don't have to directly do it. Yeah, boy. It's not a bad idea. He's got something to not discuss. Now, if you really want to discuss, get him in some power and get him in some plants and put him on do not fire. See, they're not going to do too much damage anyway. Yeah, boy. But at least this way, they're hard to hit, and they're good at spotting. Because even though they're laying down, they can see out this far on the map. So it really gets a cover here. Especially when the enemy likes to bring in orders right here, or some early game 18. Might be able to catch a glimpse of it. An M80, uh, just by having that guy down there in the front from a lost vehicle anyway. Okay, now that I've got my AT gun coming up, you notice that I've got all these guys in the back. Verstanden! Um, and I'm not really seeing any enemy, mostly because I'm not playing anyone at the moment. But in this situation, what I like to do is bring my sniper up a bit and control hold and scout out a little past my lines to try and see where they're putting their important stuff and if possible clip it. Yeah, come on. One key thing here is as soon as your sniper, sniper takes a shot and um, kills someone or even if he misses and you notice that they start to react, you need to get him out of there. So as soon as he takes that shot and you see him miss, get right back out of direct control mode and send him back to a bush somewhere. And don't keep sending him back to the same place. So if I come up here again, yeah, boy. I probably want to come up to this side a little more, get a little more vision here and uh, see what's going on. And then as soon as he's there again, I'm going to run him the other way. Keep him out of line of sight. Okay, now I've got an AT gun up, but here's the problem. My AT gun and my guys are engaged in infantry all over here. First off, your AT gun needs to be far enough back that he's not helping in the infantry fight unless you decide for him to. A lot of people like to turn their AT gun to uh, firing turn and fire mode only. I don't like to do that because there's always that chance that I'm not microwing properly and my AT gun needs to take some work on its AI cell. So what I like to do to make sure it's not engaged in the infantry battle is the following. When your tank, when your AT gun feels like it's being engaged and you're being shot at or it can see the infantry from its point of view, it's going to switch to AG rounds. Now, it only gets five of them, but they're pretty good at taking out buildings and infantry. So I, I would say they have some use. However, with me, a lot of the times in the light game, I've got infantry to deal with infantry, and I want my AT gun to be focused on that mid-game vehicle rush, especially with the Americans where I can expect a Sherman or something else a little nasty, but not quite as bad. So, to keep my AT gun from switching over to the wrong type of ammo, what I'd like to do a lot of the time, and you can see I've pulled up the inventory, is drop off my AT shells. Now, I fired four of them, so I only had one left, but it's still loaded in there. So for me to respond to a tank, especially a light tank, it takes this long of time. I mean, look, at it, it's still loading. So that tank can get all the way in my backfield at this point, and I haven't even seen it yet. But what, I wanted, what I want you to think about is as soon as you get that AT gun and you think, I don't want him engaging infantry anymore, grabbing that HE route out of your tank and just dropping it on the ground next to him, or out of your AT gun. You've now saved yourself from ever having to worry about it being loaded in anything but AP armor, piercing, or APCR. Another thing with the AT gun is as soon as I fire these shots, even if I don't kill it, what I need to get to think about doing is getting this thing back. Now, another quick tip is if that 222 is still alive at this point, it's a great vehicle to start towing with and using in very small spurts. Never keep it in vision for long, never let them know where it's going to be coming from. Um, and finally, when you're going light game and you decide to go AT gun, you're going to have to have a set of more defensive build as far as anti-tank scope. It's going to be a little behind in points. So you need to really work on making up for that by killing off some of their more expensive units. With Germany, you have a bit of a disadvantage in the price of everything being a little more expensive. You also don't have the light capability like the uh, other factions do, besides the Japanese, with that half-track that's not as deadly without the 50 cap. Okay, so those are a few of the light uh, fight vehicle and light AT gun and light infantry play I want to do early game. Once your early game starts to develop the mid game, um, we'll talk a little more about that in another video, but for now I just want to remind you, if you're not going AT gun, you want a little more pushing. Infantry quality really matters. Now, if you're looking to just get some meat shields up there to help your MG and your sniper push up with something, the Volkstrom are great. But if you actually want to push forward, I recommend the Panzergrens. The reason I do this is they have two MGs, and they have a bunch of rifles. And they're all paratroopers, so they're better at accuracy, they're better at aiming. Um, they also have some pretty decent AT, AT capability. Push done! Actually carrying 18 grenades, 12 regular grenades, and quite a few more of them. Yeah, boy. If, if you want to go with the more AT prone infantry, that is definitely where you want to go with the Panzer Grenadier. They have some Panzer Faust and uh, Panzer Shreds. The disposable Panzer rockets that uh, fill tanks pretty quickly if you're uh, playing with them. One other light game and early game thing you yeah, think about is. You really want to rely on your grenades, and smoke, AT grenades, everything in your disposal to clean up areas the enemy has. You don't want to let them be comfortable anywhere. You want them to be One quick way to get your AT guy out 
to, uh, or your SMG guy out to do some help here, is by pushing F1 and then clicking where I want him to throw the grenade. Instead of having to take the direct control, which can be pretty taxing on a new player, this way uh, I can move back and do something else instead of pushing F1. As I said earlier, I want to show you, in this map specifically, and as you get to know the maps, they each have little tricks like this. One thing you can do with Germany, or this side of the map, to really help yourself out, is blow out this back wall. Fire off my now, what you do this back wall, I don't know if you did it with that shot, yeah, so maybe we have to do another one, but that's because I didn't go boom. Um, one thing you do yeah, have to think about with this guy is throwing a hole in this building and getting a guy in there or two, down in crouch mode or fully prone, just to help yourself out as oh. far as taking that point out. So if I can run that guy in there as soon as he gets in, I can crouch him down in the corner, have him rotate to look the way I'd want, and then I can kind of Fast ignore done. him while I worry about other things in the battle and know that there's nothing coming through that door. Or really, it's not even easy to get a grenade in through that window unless your guys might make that much. In which case, he's probably spending time where he shouldn't be. So you can kind of take advantage of that too. Yeah, boy. Um, once you get a squad up, another tip is, this squad is a little too far forward. Usually I send a squad back to about here, a little further back so that I can div divvy them out as I need to. And don't forget your bottom bar on the bottom right. If you double click on one of these shoot you can select just him. Now the caveat is he's still part of that whole group if you try and select through the squad leader, but an easy quick drag and he's by himself. You can have him setting up sandbags, or like we talked about earlier, have a rifle and free set it up for him. And you've just broken him yeah, off of the crew. You can select the rest of the group. Don't ever don't ever have your guys move into combat zones in more groups than 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 three. I mean three is really the max you want to get to. I like to stay at a two or one and kind of vary them up so I know what I'm dealing with. Like these guys are both riflemen, for instance, so I'm going to try and keep them together because I know what capacity they have, just to keep them in my head. Same with these two. I'm going to send them off. And if you look, once I get them closer there, I start getting more and more intense as to where they yeah, just go off to. Finding cover positions, trying Fast to put them in the open for very long. And if you look, I haven't even pushed forward yet. This is before I actually do my push. I like yeah, to boy. spread them out like this. Um, it might be a little overkill in some scenarios, but it's going to keep your guy alive. Fast a little done. Long. Don't forget. After they put a sandbag down, your guys do not, I stress, do not get behind it on their own. Sometimes they lay down in front of it because the AI yeah, is a little special. Um, if you notice, this paratrooper's got a scope on his rifle, three stars, so he's going to do some pretty serious damage. With him. So I like to put him up in a forward sandbag position so he has enough Fast range done. to do some work. These guys are kind of the same way. Okay, so I've got my guys spread out. I've got kind of a little force back here with one machine gunner and a few yeah, other boy. guys to really do some work. Um, what I want to do is I'm grabbing the guys like this, Fast and done. I want to push them forward. Now, when they get close, it's not ever a bad idea to drag click to drag them like this. Yeah, if you boy. watch, they'll try and spread out a little bit more. If you just click to a Wird spot, erledigt. or double click to get them to run, they're going to kind of spread out a little bit, but not as much. I find that they fo focus in the right direction, and they try and focus and stay in that direction. Yeah, boy. This. Um, and they also seem to spread out a bit. All right, it looks like it's the end of the game, and that's kind of the end of our little lecture. If you like these, let me know. Um, I'm really interested in uh, maybe helping some new players get into the community because I love the Men of War community and uh, I feel like this game, even though it's two years old, is still probably one of the most impressive RTSs out there as far as complexity and an interesting system. So uh, this has been The Boogeyman. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks.